Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity Top Down Shooter tutorial series. Now that we've got our player able to move around, no matter how we want them to, with the mouse or the controller, uh, we want to actually add some more things into the game. So we're going to add an enemy for the player to attack. And being as this is kind of a basic little kind of shooter game, we're going to create a slow moving kind of zombie enemy um, that'll just keep walking towards the player. So. Before we do that, we're just going to set up a couple of things here. So at the moment we have our little kind of blank square that our player walks around in. But if I'm to change our game view here to the maximum view, you can see we can suddenly see a lot more around the edges and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is we'll go back here. Instead of it being free aspect, we're going to set it to be 16 to 9, which is the kind of standard aspect ratio of most kind of screens these days. Um, and you can see then in this window, now we have the little bits at the side of this window and then if we maximize this again we can see we get the same view and we get it nice and consistent because you want to keep the same view going as you go through your stuff to keep everything as I said consistent and making a little bit of sense so I'm also going to get our plane and we're going to stretch this out so that it just completely covers the screen so it's um, just a white background plane so on the scale here I'm going to set it to 5 on the x-axis and 5 on the z-axis so that we have a little bit of space for our player to kind of wander around here. Because if he wanders off the side here, he'll slowly fall down below the ground, which isn't isn't what we want to happen at all, obviously. Okay, so we have that set up there. Then we need to actually start making our enemy. So obviously we have um, colors set up for all these various things. So we're going to create a new material for our enemy down here first before we go and make anything in the scene. Uh, we we'll just call this enemy for now. That'll be fine. And I'm going to make it kind of a yellow color, kind of a pale yellow. That should do. Okay, so we're going to do the same that we did with the player, where we're going to create a capsule object. So we're going to go to 3D object and then capsule. Of course, we could also go up here and go game object, then 3D object capsule like that. We're going to move it up above the ground like we did before. So on the Y axis, we're going to set it to 1. And I'm just going to click and drag it over to here. I'm actually going to zoom out this scene view a bit. And we're going to, if you click the little green arrow at the top here, it'll actually go down to a top down view. And if you hold Alt and Control, then you can kind of drag around the view yourself like this. So just, just to make things a bit easier to manage here. So we have our uh, kind of enemy here. So we obviously need to give him his little bit of color. So I'm going to click and drag our enemy material on top of him. And we can see now he goes a nice bit of yellow. Uh, but if this guy is going to be chasing around the player, we need to know which way he's facing. And since we're talking about this being a kind of a simple little zombie enemy, let's give him two little arms sticking out in front of him so we know which way he's facing. So on the capsule, we're going to right click on that and we're going to create a 3D object. We're going to create a cube, which is now a child. Uh, we need to give that cube um, the same kind of yellowy color. I'll actually just drag it up here first so we can see it better. So we're going to drop that down there uh, and we're going to go. Uh, I'm just going to hold Alt and zoom it around so we can see it a bit better because we want to scale it down a bit. So we're going to leave it the same on the, on the blue kind of on the Z axis. We're going to leave it the same, but we're going to make it squash down smaller and squash in that way a bit. Just like that. So it kind of looks like the gun thing there almost, but uh, that's OK for now. So we'll switch back to our move view. We'll go back up to the top. We're going to put one arm there like that. We're going to duplicate it by pressing Control and D, and then we'll drag the other one over there, just like that. So now he looks like he has a couple of arms to come after the player with. Okay, so we have our little enemy to walk around. Now we need to give it a script so he knows to chase the player and actually um, spook the player out a little bit. Okay, so what we'll do is, first thing we're going to do is add a rigid body so that we know how to push the enemy around within the world. So we're going to go to add component and type in rigid body or start typing it at least. We want to do the same thing we did with the player where we need to freeze the rotation or else our uh, enemy is going to just fall around all over the place which would be not very good for us at all. And then the next thing we do is actually create a script that's going to handle this enemy. So we're going to go create a C sharp script that we'll call enemy controller and so we're going to make this guy for now just nice and simple all it's going to try and do is just move towards the player at all times so 
and no matter how many enemies we have, they'll just be all going towards the enemy, uh, or towards the player. As we go forward, we'll start adding, doing some different things with our enemies, but for now we'll keep it nice and simple while we uh, get the basics of our game under control. So obviously, uh, we added the rigid body to our enemy, so we're going to have to make a reference to that because we're going to want to control the, the velocity of the enemy. So we're going to say private rigid body that we'll call my RB. So my RB for my rigid body. We'll obviously also need how fast we want our enemy to move around. So we'll create a public public float that we'll call move speed. So that'll control how much our enemy can move around in the world, or how quickly at least. Uh, and up, finally, we'll need to know what is the target that we're going to go towards. And we know as the enemy, the enemy is always going to have the player as the target. So that way we can use a public player controller because only our player will have a player controller script. So public player controller that we will call the player. So first thing we need to do in our start function here is we need to get the rigid body component, which is up here. So my rigid body we need to get that component that is attached to the same object that this script will be attached to. So my RB equals get component of type rigid body. So that'll just search on the object, which will be our capsule here. It'll just search on that to find the rigid body that is attached to the player. Or sorry, to, uh, that is attached to the uh, enemy here. Or as it says at the moment, capsule, we'll change that to say enemy in a minute. Um, the other thing we need to do is make it automatically find the player within the world. Because if we spawn in some more enemies as the game goes on, we want them to automat automatically know where the player is. We don't want to have uh, to have that set because that could cause issues down the line, of course. So we'll just say the player is equal to find object of type player controller. So that'll just search whatever the active scene is and it'll say, okay, find an object that has a player controller attached to it and there will only be one object because that is our player here. And then it'll say, okay, I know what that is. We'll set that as our player reference in this script. Uh, put our semicolon in there. Okay, so we're going to use the same thing that we used for our um, making our player look at the controller. If we just open that script up here for a second. Here we go. So uh, when we were making the player look at where the mouse is pointing, we used our transform.lookat to set the position that the player should rotate towards. Uh, or, well, we'd already decided. We basically, we'd already decided where the mouse is, we had that position, and then we were using this to say, look at that position where the mouse is in our world. So we're going to use something basically the same here for our enemy controller. We're just going to say transform dot look at. And the thing that we want them to look at is the player. But we can't just say the player, we have to uh, determine where the player is within the world. And the way we have that is on the player, we have a transform which, just let that compile for a second, if we go back in here, we see the player has a transform and has a position. Every object has a position, a rotation, and a scale within the world, of course. So we have the player dot transform dot position. So that's our position in space that we will basically just turn our um, enemy to look at. So in our player controller, we also had to specify that it would look at... Um, it would stay at transform position that y on the y axis so it stayed at the right height so it wouldn't be leaning forward and stuff like that but we know that our enemy and our uh, player are both the exact same height so we don't need to worry about that because we ha we're dealing with them being the exact same things within our world so now that we have um our enemy rotating towards the player let's just actually test that out within the world and make sure that it's working for us before we do anything else like making our enemy move so we'll just wait for that to compile. Okay, and once that's finished, we'll go to our capsule. We'll rename him to be enemy. And then we're going to grab... Actually, no, instead of grabbing a script, we'll add component here and we'll type in our enemy controller. There we go. Add the enemy controller. Let's give him a move speed. Uh, actually, 
we don't need to give him move speed because he's not moving yet. But we'll actually just type it in for now. We'll just have it at 2, so it's just set up by default. But now if we press play, we should see that the enemy will turn to face the player. So there you go, you can see him. Just following the player around, suspiciously, carefully watching. We can shoot at him, but at the moment all it'll do is push him around a little bit. Um, okay, so now that we have our player rotating to face, or our enemy rotating to face the player, let's move him around in the world. And as we discussed in a previous episode, when we want to move our any object within the world that has a rigid body attached to it, we want to do that in fixed update rather than update. So we could put it in update here, but what we want to do is add in just above our fixed, uh, just above our update, but we could put this anywhere, it doesn't really matter where it goes in the script. We, but we're going to put in here fixed update with capital F and a capital U and put our brackets and our open our curly brackets. And then within here, basically all we want to do is on our rigid body, so my rigid body, we want to set the velocity that the rigid body has to be equal to transform dot forward so transform dot forward is just whatever um whatever way the object is facing within the world it kind of it's a it's a shortcut to get uh which direction basically the player is facing in so what we can do is say transform dot forward multiplied by move speed so what that'll do is it'll basically give us so say if the zombie is pointing exactly to the left then it'll be minus one on the x-axis and zero on the y or zero on the z-axis and it'll multiply that by the move speed so then it'll be minus uh, our move speed is two so it'll be minus two for example but say if the player was pointing um or the enemy was pointing diagonally down to the bottom left it would be x, uh, on the x-axis it would be minus 0.5 say and on the y-axis would be minus 0.5 it's a handy system to use this transformed off forward rather than having to work out exactly which way the player is unity has this nice little shortcut that we don't have to worry about it so we can save this now and pop back into the game and let it compile once it finishes compiling we should be able to see there we go our enemy is now moving around within the world so we can run away from him, we can shoot at him a little bit, but all our bullets do at the moment is just push him around a little bit like that. So what we're going to have to do is, well the bullet just got caught on him there so it managed to keep pushing him forever. But what we're going to need to do now is um, create a way for A, the player to take damage from the enemies, and also for us to actually do some damage with our bullets. Um, uh, something that some a couple of people have pointed out in comments is if we shoot a whole load of bullets here we can see we're getting a big long list of bullet clones here and the more of these we shoot they just keep going forever and we're just creating more and more and more so that is something that we will de deal with in an upcoming episode as well so uh join me again in the next episode where we're going to start actually doing some damage with our bullets and hurting our enemies and then in turn getting our enemies to hurt us so thanks for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Thanks for watching this episode, and if you want to learn more about developing your own games, you can follow the link on screen to my complete 2D platformer game development course on Udemy, where you will learn how to program and build a complete game in Unity 2D with multiple levels, enemies, and unique boss battles. So click the link on screen or in the description below and get the course today.